Hello, warm welcome to you all on Janak lecture series in another different video lecture. For more similar video lecture, please don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash Janak lecture. Please hit a like on my Facebook piece www.facebook.com slash Janak lecture. Let's proceed. I am Janaka Ossi from Nepal. Today in this lecture we will be talking about the ovulation and we will be also dealing with what are the changes occurring after the ovulation within the ovarian follicle and fate of the ovum itself. Before talking about the ovulation itself, let's see what are the changes occurring in the ovary before the ovulation process. Initially, the primordial follicles, they are large in number present in the ovary and they consist of the primary oocyte and under the action of the follicle stimulating hormone, this primary, primordial follicle, they start proliferating and they form the primary follicle and this primary follicle we can see over here this is actually the preantral follicle but before the formation of the preantral follicle the primary follicle formation forms the primary follicle and that primary follicle gets converted into the preantral follicle and in the preantral follicles what happens is that this oocyte it gets surrounded with a glycoprotein membrane that we call it as a zona pellucida and the cells around this oocytes they get multilaminar by its proliferation and because of its proliferation now it is converted into large number of layers of a cell and these cells are called the follicular cells or the granulosa cell and this granulosa cells have got the property of secreting the fluid and these fluids are accumulated in these cells in between the cells in the small space known as lacuna that's why it is also known as the preantral phase. Let's uh, later on what happens is that this antrum or the lacuna they get fused to form the large cavity which is called the follicular cavity or the antrum and because of this antrum this oocyte it is pushed towards the periphery and this follicular cells which are surrounding this oocytes now these cells they are called the cumulus ophorica cells. This further enlarges the antral cavity it enlarges and the oocyte it is pushed towards the periphery. Now it is ready for the ovulation. For its ovulation now it requires the action of the another different hormone that is the luteinizing hormone. So we will see about that. So during this changes that are occurring in the oocytes and the follicular set itself see the cells in increase in size because of the proliferation of these follicular cells around it and at the time of the ovulation it is uh, the size of 100 to 120 micrometer initially the primordial follicle was about in the size of 90 to 30 micrometer so during this process as it is going on there occurs the several changes changes in the level of the gonadotropin hormone changes in the ovarian follicle changes in the estrogen and progesterone hormone level and changes occurs also into the endometrium of the uterus. So just before the ovulation there occurs the changes in the gonadotropin hormone level, follicle stimulating hormone level and the luteinizing hormone level they rise up followed by the increase in the peak of the estrogen and later on there is the increase in the progesterone hormone level. So this because of this gonadotropin hormone which increase in its level just before the ovulation they it play the major role in the ovulation so we'll see about that so just about 12 to 24 hours before ovulation what happens is that there is the LH charge followed by the peak in the follicle stimulating hormone because of the positive feedback cycle given by this hormone it happens to increase in the peak and that we call it as a LH charge and this LH charge it is very much important for the ovulation process to occur. So because of this LH charge it induces the resumption of the first meiotic 
division of the primary oocyte. The primary oocytes which was arrested at the diplotin stage of the first meiotic cell division, it now resumes its first meiotic cell division and continues the meiotic second cell division. That's why the ovarian follicle now contains the secondary oocyte and it also causes the growth of the follicle. That's why the graphene follicle now increase in size and it pushes on the surface of our ovary and because of that bulging we can see over here bulging on the surface of our ovary induced by the secondary oocyte containing graphene follicle and soon the stigma appears it is a small a vascular spot on the swelling and this stigma it ruptures to release the follicular fluid and during this process the cumulus ophrica cells which were around the secondary oocytes they also get detached from the surface of the ovary and they also happen to be released along with the follicular fluid so this is the cumulus ophrica cells now after its detachment they are now called as a corona radiator cells so it gets released out and we can see over there the secondary oocyte it is now released out with the follicular fluid and some of the cumulus oophorical cells are also released and part of the ovarian follicle now it remains within the ovary itself and now it develops, develops into the corpus luteum. So these are the changes occurring just before the ovulation. The luteinizing hormone increases and it increases the level in the progesterone now because of it there is the collagenous activity into the wall of the ovary because of it the ovarian follicle wall its ruptures and followed by the degeneration of the stigma there is the follicular ruptures and because of it the ovum it gets evaginated and as this process is going on there is follicular hyperemia because of the fluid that transfuses into the follicle and because of that the follicle increase in size and that also supports in the follicular rupture and evolution evagination of the ovum. So this is the cause for the expulsion of oocyte increase in intrafollicular pressure because of the invagination of a fluid into the follicle and it is also supported by the contraction of a smooth muscle cell on the theca externa and the enzymatic digestion of the follicular wall. Actually, the, it is the collagenase activity that digests the follicular wall and because of that, there occurs the weakening of a follicular wall and the ovum is released out. And at this phase of the ovulation, there in some women there may occur the slight bleeding into the peritoneal cavity that may result into a pain and that pain that occurs during the ovulation is known as metal smudge. Metal in the German meets, means meat and smudge means pain. So it is a variable amount of a pain that occurs in the lower part of the abdomen during the ovulation process. It may be used as a symptoms of ovulation but it is not exactly a symptom for ovulation so beta indicator for the ovulation are like the in decrease in the basal body temperature and other applied aspect about the ovulation is the anovulation in some women the menstrual cycle may be anovulatory where the no ovulation occurs because of the inadequate release of the gonadotropin hormone and this ovulation in the woman having this problem an ovulatory cycle the ovulation can be induced with the help of the administration of gonadotropin or the ovulatory agents like clomiphene citrate and the released ovum the exact structure of that ovum is like that externally the cumulus ovarica cells which surround this oocyte they are now called the corona radiator cell and just adjacent to the corona radiator cell, moving inward, it is surrounded with the zona pellucida. And over here, we can see the oocytes. The oocyte contains the cell arrested at the second meiotic division on the metaphase state. And it is surrounded with the vital line membrane. So this is the vital line membrane surrounding the oocyte. And in between the zona pellucida and the vital line space, there is a space 
remaining that is known as the perivitelline space. This perivitelline space contains the first polar body and there is lifeless food particle is also present that is separate, separated from the protoplasm that is also known as deutoplasm. And this is how the corona radiata cell and the vitelline membrane they are merged into a zona pellucida. And this zona pellucida contains the three glycoprotein. They are zona pellucida A, B, and C. So now let's talk about the fate of the oocyte itself and the fate of the ovarian follicle that was left in the ovary after ovulation. So when the graphene follicle ruptures, the oocyte along with the cumulus ovarical cells it is released out and because of the sweeping action of this fimbri of the infundibulum that is the part of the fallopian tube it sweeps on the surface of ovary and picks up this cumulus ovarical cells along with the oocyte in the second meiotic cell division and now because of the peristaltic action of the muscular wall of the fallopian tube it is approached into the ampulla and this is ampulla it is the part of the fallopian tube where the fertilization do occur so the oocyte which is now present in the ampulla it has to be fertilized within 12 hours of the ovulation if the ovum it cannot be fertilized within 24 hours it gets degenerated and the degenerated ovum it is absorbed by the wall of the uterus or it may be released after the uh, menstrual bleeding now let's talk about the fate of the ovarian follicle that was left in the ovary so the ovarian follicle which was left in the ovary it consists of the granulosa cells and the theca interna cell now under the now this cells which were left in the ovarian follicle they get collapsed and the glycogen lipids get deposited lipid cells get deposited over here and there is the growth of the blood vessels now these cells after crumpling they are known as corpus luteum so this corpus luteum it mainly consists of the granulosa cell along with the theca interna cell along with the luteal cells and the blood vessels now this is known as the corpus luteum so this corpus luteum is formed under the action of the luteinizing hormone that's why it is also called luteum and this corpus luteum it produced the progesterone and some estrogen and this progesterone it prepares the uterus for the implantation of the blastocyst now if the oocyte happens to fertilize what happens is that this corpus luteum which was formed in the ovary it enlarges in size and that is known as corpus luteum of pregnancy and it increases more hormone production and it remains active up to the two first 20 week till its role is taken over by the placenta and its degeneration the degeneration of this corpus luteum of pregnancy it is prevented by the human chorionic gonadotropin that is produced by the sensitive trophoblast now if oocyte it is if it undergo failure to get fertilized now this corpus luteum gets involutes and it forms a whitish scar that is known as the corpus luteum of menstruation with this we come to the end of the lecture on the ovulation about the fate of the ovum itself and the fate of the ovarian follicle which was left in the ovary. I hope this lecture was fruitful. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.